Hi, and welcome to our video from the city of Hamburg in Germany. And we know on our two visits we've only just scratched the surface of what's available. Here's what we found out so far. And if you like what you see, then why not subscribe? And hopefully one day we can complete the story. As you may know, Hamburg's in the north of Germany, pretty much in the centre. So what do we have to offer you? Well, with the old, old tunnel, the Elbe Philharmonie, St. Nikolai Memorial, the warehouse district, including Miniature Wonderland, Chill House, some nibbles and tipples, before ending up at the Rat House. So let's start with the old Elbe Tunnel. A feat of 20th century engineering, it opened in 1911 and provides two tunnels under the River Elbe. And as you can see, it has that turn of the century style that carries all the way through. Now these tunnels run for 426 metres and sit 24 metres below the river surface. It provided a link between the centre of the city and the industrial south. It's now been superseded by more modern tunnels. And as pedestrians, you've got a choice between the stairs or the lift. No prizes for guessing which option we took. It's also popular with cyclists, and I was quite surprised to understand that it can still be used by cars to cross the river for a small fee. It's from here you can still see that the River Elbe is very much a working river. And this section here is for Janice's dad Pete, who used to be a tugboat captain on the River Thames. Does it bring back memories? It's from here you get views of the city, and directly opposite is Landersbrücken, a floating pontoon full of bars, restaurants and cafes, a great place to entertain yourself, or pick up a boat ride. Hamburg has an amazing array of canals, which are worth discovering. And there on the right is the Elbe Philharmonie, which we'll get to shortly. Now back on the north side we come across this. Damn those pesky Dutch, they get everywhere. Along the north bank, there's a nice walkway that you can follow all the way into the town. Alternatively, the U-Bahn runs parallel to it as well. We're now closing in on the old Philharmonie in the tail end of the warehouse district. Now let's take a closer look at the old Philharmonie. Opened in 2017, it is, as you would expect, home to a concert hall, built atop a 1960s warehouse, and it provides a 360 degree viewing platform to look around the city. Access is free, but you do need to queue and get a ticket, and then you take this escalator ride. When you reach the top, you come to an open section, once again, full of bars, restaurants and cafes, where you can grab a bite to eat and obviously access to the concert hall but we've come for the view so let's just step outside and this section really reminds me of London Docklands which was my working home for 20 years now I may have stopped for a swift half and a pretzel but you don't want to know about that said the glass section at the top resembles sails in the wind. Yeah, I guess I can see that. And now the St. Nicolai Memorial. The remains of a Gothic revived church designed by the English architect George Gilbert Scott and completed in 1873 and destroyed in Operation Gomorrah the bombing of Hamburg in 1943. It now serves as a memorial and for a small fee you can take an elevator to the top where you once again you get magnificent views over the city but also included in the price is a museum within the crypt of the church which is well worth seeing and that in the distance is the Heinrich Hertz TV tower which will once again be opening its viewing platforms to the public in 2023 and this is Hamburg's town hall or Rat House, 
but we'll see more of that later. And this is the warehouse district, which will be our next stop. So here we go. Spikerstad, the UNESCO World Heritage recognised warehouse district of Hamburg. Built from 1883 to 1927, it was also heavily damaged in Operation Gamora, with the rebuild and restoration work completed in 1967. It's a fabulous place to explore and so photogenic, especially after the sun has gone down. It's also home to the International Maritime Museum, Hamburg's Dungeon and also Miniature Wonderland. Now this is more than just a big train set, oh so much more. And we were persuaded to visit by a gentleman we met on the Christmas markets on our first visit. And whilst it wasn't originally on our radar, it was certainly worth the time we spent here. There's such a meticulous attention to detail and stories unfolding wherever you look. It seems popular with all ages. And the thing that caught us by surprise was roughly every 15 minutes it transitions between night and day. And you need to look closely because although the scenes depict a real life world, there's a sense of humour at play here. Especially if you check out the airport. Is that the Millennium Falcon Park there? And yes, as you would expect being an airport, there's planes landing and taking off. But as I said, the devil's in the detail. So just keep looking. Now, depending on how geeky you are, you'd expect to spend at least two hours here, maybe more, and I get the feeling it's ever evolving. And as you'd expect, Hamburg is modelled here. Now this looks rather familiar, doesn't it? Oh, and the boats? Yep, some of them move too. So this kept us warm and dry, and away for the glue vine, for a couple of hours on our Christmas visit. Now if you want to see more of that, I'll pop a link up in the corner. And another district that I absolutely love is Chill House. As you can probably tell, I'm a big fan of architecture, especially early 20th century. Once again, great to stroll around and admire the attention to detail. Especially at dusk. And now let's have a look at some nibbles and some tipples. I love discovering this grill house on the side of the street in Hamburg. A chance for me to have a taste of currywurst and it wasn't even Christmas. And this little bar, just a stone throw from the chill house. Smoky on the inside, but warm and welcoming. And with some good local beers too. And then there was this restaurant, close to the warehouse district, where I had lab scouse. Which I think is closely related to scouse, the dish from Liverpool and Janice stuck with a traditional schnitzel. And another place I need to mention is John Albrecht, a brew house in the centre of Hamburg. And as I said, brew house, so of course I visited on both occasions. Really friendly staff, great beer, and a great atmosphere. I just loved it. A couple of points for the weary travellers, and I'm not quite sure what I had to eat here. Cheese, mushrooms, meat, but I'm not sure. And of course Janice stuck with, yep, you guessed it, her schnitzel. And now we return to the centre of town and the Rat House. The building that you see before you dates from the late 19th century, after the earlier one burnt down in the Great Fire of 1842. It's around this area where you get to see a little bit more of the stylish side of Hamburg, including some of its shopping streets not one for me. And again you can see the city was built on water, with canals everywhere. And then we can 
from Dubin and Elsa, a large inland body of water. Once again, a great place to stop and watch the world go by. We'll take in a boat cruise, perhaps one for next time. top of the lake we come across the Hamburg's Kunsthalle or its art gallery. Now sadly we didn't have time to explore. Once again that's something for next time. Now back to the rat house. As I mentioned I think we're going to be back to Hamburg again. It's a great city and I know we've only scratched the surface. We found it warm, friendly and welcoming. It was easy to get around on the U-Bahn system, and we had a great time here. So I hope you like what we put together. What have we missed and what should we visit on our next time? Leave us a comment to let us know. Thanks for watching, take care, stay safe and happy travels. <laughs>